and welcome back to the legend of zelda wind waker for the nintendo gamecube all right my friends welcome back so we have finally arrived at the first temple of this game that is inside dragon roost island and we're here to help uh, prince kamali out by finding out why valu is kind of in distress so it's our job to take care of the uh, the bokoblins and all them damn enemies and stuff thankfully i have my sword and shield with me this time I was kind of left a little bit useless at the Forsaken Fortress, but I have it now. There we go, let's get rid of these guys first. Because I think they spawn a chest for us, am I right? Maybe not, but it does mean that we can light up these two torches. And I can only guess what that might do. This is a Zelda game, of course, so let's go ahead and find out after frying this thing away. <laughs> Those are like uh, jars of water. They'll come in handy later on. We're going to come across a couple more of those in this uh, in this temple run. All right. So what does this do for us? It gives us a chest, and I would be so tempted to say that inside this chest is probably the key to the door. It's been a little while since uh, I played this game the full way through, but I'm just going on basic Zelda logic here. <laughs> there we go. A small key for the door right next door to it. All right. There we go. Right, so there's a great deal of fire in this dungeon, um, so just try not to get burned. I know that's a bit logical, but yeah, look at the state of this place. It's no wonder Valu is in great distress. Alright, oh man, I'm sorry this happened to you. Okay. So down here, as you can see, we can't reach that platform up there, but look at that. Straight away, there is a block here for us to climb up on top of. I was looking on uh, YouTube the other day, just out of curiosity, how long somebody's gone through this game in, you know, speed running wise. And I think one of the uh, the world records, if not the world record, is about just over six hours for a hundred percent of the game. And I thought that is pretty darn crazy. I mean, I I haven't really taken note of how long it's taken me to complete this game in the past, but six hours seems quite impressive based on the amount of stuff that you have to do in this game. There's a lot of places you have to visit, uh, you know, via sea travel and stuff. There's a lot of stuff you got to do, so that is actually quite amazing to get 100% of everything in that time. That is pretty darn cool. Let's go ahead and throw the bottle of water, <laughs> there you see, and it does that for us. Somehow I'm safe from the lava there, although if I touch it I will get burned and create a little cutscene that will take me back to the last door I came through, but it worked there for some reason. This is for the dungeon map. Don't really entirely need this, but if you want to grab it, it is here. And they are generous enough to throw you some of these uh, jars of water here as well, so... Alright, cool. Yeah, I see you up there, come on. Why don't you come down here before you try and wreck my shit up halfway up that ladder? <laughs> this is a uh, choo-choo. They come in uh, different colours. This is a red one, as you can see. Come on. Down you come. Is he actually moving, or is he just staying at the top of that ladder waiting for me? I haven't got any uh, distant weapons yet, have I? No, of course not. There you are. Come down here. Normally only takes uh, one hit. It didn't drop anything, as far as I could see, but they do drop um, an item called Choo Choo Jelly. And uh, there is a shop on Windfall Island that makes these uh, coloured jellies and makes them into potions for you. After you bring them a certain amount, of course. The red ones, as you can probably tell, uh, regenerate your health. The green ones do magic, and if you're very lucky to come across the amount of uh, blue chews, then you can imagine what that does. Um, I'm pretty sure that just does the usual stuff of what blue potions normally do in Zelda games, which is refill your magic and your health. So, yeah. They're definitely worth keeping an eye open for. Right here, apparently. Jump down, Link. Well, got ambushed, but still managed to stay damage free. Huh. All right. Well, here we go. Here is our first choo-choo jelly of the game. This is red choo jelly. Goes in our spoils bag. We can sell it to Beetle. He buys pretty much anything. He's got too much time and money on his hands, I think, personally. But what's inside this chest? Another small key. Okay, not bad. My guess is we're probably going to use it immediately. 
But first I'm going to go ahead and stock up on these jellies. Alright, good. So we've got about four of these. I can't remember exactly how many uh, chew jellies the shopkeeper asks for. I think it's about 10 or 20. It might be 10 of the, uh, the blue ones actually because they're very hard to come across. Alright. Let's go ahead and do that, create a chain reaction, and that leads us all the way over to the door on the other side there. Pretty much the entrance we came in from, right there. So we've gone around in a little bit of a circuit, just to get through this one door. Alright, so you can come back here later on. Uh, let me go ahead and explain after I've taken out these jellies. There's a grappling hook pole up there that we can grapple onto, with a certain item we get soon. And it takes you over to a little mini platform where you can get a treasure chart in a chest. So if you're going for like all the treasure charts in this game, um, I'm personally not. You can go over there and get one from there. And I'm kind of tempted to go up to 200 rupees just for the sake of it. <laughs> all right, let's take this guy out. And what else we got? Let's have a look. Yeah, I can see the I can see the pattern here. Can I destroy this just normally? No, I can't. Right, I need to burn it. <laughs> it's not quite as strong as the swords, is it? Let's just go ahead and burn that away instead, then. Switch equals door. Door equals salvation. Switch is our salvation out of this place. Right outside, and there's another Bokoblin there. Goody. Let's throw a jar at his head. Come on. I missed. Never mind. Jeez, the bridge is falling down. Get the heck out of there. Are you guys going to drop one of them butterfly pendants? No, nope, apparently not. They dropped this item called a butterfly pendant. Again, that's kind of like a little collectible that you can pick up uh, in your travels around this game. Um, there's a woman, again, on Windfall Island, funny enough, that uh, requires a certain amount of them. And it does go very re re uh, rewarded later on in the game. She ends up giving you your own... Uh, your own place on the sea. It's pretty darn cool. I can't remember the name of these. I think they're like for cargoes or something. But these guys tend to drop, if you're lucky, uh, not rupees. Um, they normally drop golden feathers. And there's another use for them as well. So just make sure that you go ahead and uh, pick up enemy items in this game. Because later on you can make money off of them. Or you can sell them to uh, people that actually need them for like a little mini... Uh, quest within the game. Alright, be very careful here as you can see. Don't get much time to get across here before the lava starts spewing out the side again. And what have we got here? Jeez, that is a massive boulder. Alright. <laughs> okay, so we're on the outside and we're on the inside. Uh, it's a bit of a strange dungeon in that respect, actually, because you go in and out quite often, um, but they all lead to the same place, you know, the boss door, and then you can finish up this epic game. All of this for a bomb, just to get rid of that boulder down there, but oh well, serves a purpose. That takes care of that one. All right. So in here you've got like another block puzzle, similar to the uh, the first one that we encountered when we came into this dungeon. They're not really that difficult. Um, some people actually plan this one out by just simply moving the middle one and moving the uh, second one again. Because you can actually just climb up it if it's a little bit out like that. So you don't actually have to move the other blocks around that much. What do you want, King of Red Lions? How, did, how the freaking hell did you get in contact with me via this stone? This is a pretty darn magical stone. Maybe I could sell this to Beedle as well. Make myself a little fortune. He might sell me his boat, and then I'll stop getting annoyed by you. And these rats, actually. Just, <laughs> just bear that one in mind. I think you lose like 20 rupees anyway, even if you just get hit. It's not like uh, you can get every single rupee back. You pretty much can't. I've always had that uh, kind of vibe with Sonic the Hedgehog actually. You could have like a hundred rings and then you get hit by an enemy and you're only allowed to have 20 back. I mean that sucks in my opinion but that's the way the game goes apparently. Alright so there's another locked door behind me and of course you can see what's happening here. Don't really have to explain that one do I? 
In fact, I don't really have to explain much in this dungeon. Everything in this one is actually pretty self-explanatory. Um, I mean, compared to some other Zelda games, the puzzles and uh, dungeons in this game aren't actually that hard. Um, Majora's Mask does quite compare in a respect that it's a lot more harder than this one, I think, in terms of puzzles and dungeons, because it's just overall a much more harder game. Plus, it challenges your, uh, <laughs> your levels of anxiety as well, because it's quite a creepy game as well. And this guy over here, when I show you, when I stop bleeding out of my forehead, he's just chilling on top of this nest, and he does have a reason for being there. Come over to me, because I'm not falling off the ledge with you. There we go. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get that gold feather, am I? Nope, it wasn't even a gold feather. Screw you two. I haven't had a single gold feather yet. That's a little bit annoying. But in the nest is another small key. And that, of course, gains us access to another door that is directly in front of us, right there. And let's go through this one. Back once again inside. Let's find out what's in here then. Probably a couple of enemies. Yep, bats. Just going to go ahead and use the uh, <laughs> my little portable torch while I'm walking around, just to unlock that door there. I don't think there's much else that I can do here really. I don't think there's any uh, other bits and bobs. I mean, there's a chest here that might have a random item of some kind in it. I don't know, but there you go. It's a free joy pendant. Um, I don't know if I've actually had any of these yet. Well, let's go ahead and have a look. No, I already have had one of those. Okay, so it's nothing new on my part. Right, temperature's building once again. And what the freaking hell is that thing there? That is horrendous. We have to go around to that at some point, but this here, this is like a little warp jar. You can jump in that and that will take you around to another warp jar. It's just basically in case you uh, miss something in the dungeon and you have to go back, you can use them as a, you know, a speedier process, I suppose. Oh, great. Great. Get out of the way. That's it, break the jars for me. I appreciate your, your support. <laughs> Not really giving him a chance there, am I? A little bit ruthless like that, but there's another joy pendant. I'm going to go ahead and take that one. And in this room, uh, these jars are here for a reason. They are actually containing enemies. Some of them anyway. And there's a reason that you've got to search out these enemies. One of them is actually our ticket out of this room. It wasn't that one, but I'm going to take the Joy Pendants anyway. Wow, we're getting quite a few of them now, which is nice. Let me go ahead and take advantage of this here. There's obviously some point to this. What is this, I wonder? Another standard-looking chest. Uh, actually, no, it's a medium-looking chest. Okay. Interesting. This probably... Uh, I've already had the map and the compass. This is probably a treasure chart, is it? No way. Yeah, it's a treasure chart. Okay. That's a very easy one to gain access to. Huh. Our first treasure chart of the game as well. Not too bad. I might go hunting for some of them. You can get a lot of treasure and stuff that way. There's nobody in that one. If I remember correctly, there is one up there. <laughs> yep. Let's get rid of you. You might actually be the one. Yeah, screw your invincibility frames. I had to wait for you to get up. Another joy pendant. This is madness. But that is the one that we were looking for. Yep, yeah, that's probably it. There are a couple more jars upstairs, but I've got what I needed for. Let's go ahead and get the heck out of here. Yeah, there's clearly more enemies in there. <laughs> clearly more. Ah, oh, jeez, look at this guy. Look at this guy trying to mess my day up. Back to whence you came. He's not going to go back to whence he came. All right. Might have to make him go that way. Get back in the lava, damn it. Okay. Yeah, this is a very obscure... Um, I wouldn't even call it a puzzle. It's just a, uh, a layout of things that you have to do in a particular order. So I'm waiting for the lava to ease off at the back. Take care of that. Jump onto the little platform here right in the nick of time before I get attacked by that douchebag. And... Let's just go ahead and fly all the way to the top and jump off. <laughs> Do not stay on it, otherwise you're going back down for a bad time. 
And this leads us to the end of this episode, guys, where I've just encountered the boss door of this dungeon. It seems like a pretty good time to end this episode. We do probably have about another 10-15 minutes of the dungeon, but I like to keep my episodes short and sweet around the 15-minute mark at most. So hopefully you guys will join me in the next episode. Alright guys, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.